Pick up your gear and open your chests. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey. It's a brand new day. Welcome to season 15 of Rivals of Waterdeep. Oh, it is so nice to be back and to have you all with us. It is an exciting time. It's a season start. Uh, let's go around and introduce ourselves, uh, starting with the one, the only, Latia. Oh, it is me. Hello. Uh, that is how the overlays is designed, yeah. isn't it? Hi, I'm Latia. Uh, and I am playing everybody's favorite, Eric Kokro Monk Dahani. Who, uh, if you will notice uh, up there on the top left, let me see if I can get that right, pointing this way, yes, yes. Uh, has some shiny new art, just like the rest of us. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, I'm happy to be back in my office for many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the last time I was up here. I have a puppy, y'all. Yo, yeah, oh, yeah. What's happened? Okay, like... that's fair, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's not allowed upstairs. <laughs> Good. And then moving uh, along. Yeah. Moya, <laughs> we've got Tanya. Hey, y'all. Uh, I play Sleuth Storio, your human ranger. With I'm sorry, human paladin with a touch of ranger, just a hint of barbarian. Uh, I, too, have shiny new art. I don't know if I'm looking, pointing the right way. I have no idea. But I'm back. Well, let's see what ha- what is the result of the havoc I wreaked last season as DM. I'm excited to find out. And up, next, is she, her. up next, Brian. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Brian. I play Virgil, your Asamar Storm Sorcerer. I'm pretty sure he's someone's favorite. Secret he's, is he's my favorite. That's, okay. good. that's, that's, right. Right. that's right. My pronouns are he, they. Virgil's pronouns are he, him. Awesome. You, Anio? Hi, everybody. I'm Okenio. I'm Jim Jezians. I am playing Kent, our tiefling uh, phantom rogue. Uh, both of our pronouns are he, him. Uh... It's just so. Wait, no, is it on this side? Yeah, yes. I don't. Is it? Is it? It's so, up. It's up, it up here. here? Yeah. 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 Up, like I don't. Yeah. It's so nice. The cloak is so shiny. So I love it. It's yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And then up next, uh, unfortunately, uh, Sharif can't be with us this morning. He's dealing with some terrible, terrible. <laughs> just like, just being a living human being, dude. It's hard. Uh, but we'll see him again next week. I, I, I said it in the most he's vague fine. way okay. that made it sound. That he, yeah, let's fine. be clear. He is he healthy and, his family are and safe. Okay, <laughs> just so we're clear. Um, Mr. Had a moment don't, of panic. Don't, I was don't like, do that. <laughs> I was like, oh. how do I not give too much personal information? 
Uh, Sorry, y'all. The building ch- joke building came for him again. It, yeah, honestly, that's the I, most it did. Way to describe it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he'll be back with us next week, and we that's can't great. wait to see him. Um, and then there's me. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm Masood. Uh, I'm your GM this season. Usually, we play Gosric Nomad, everyone's favorite socialist businessman, Druid Construct. Uh, both our pronouns are he, him, but I will be using an assortment of pronouns for all the uh, collection of NPCs that I'll be inhabiting. So just keep track of that as we get across them. <laughs> Um, there will be now, a quiz. There will, there will, there will be a quiz. Uh, Moon right along, we want to thank the folks that allow us to be possible uh, to be up here. And so we're going to throw it to Brian. I really hope that I do Sharif proud with these ad reads. Um, yeah, we 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 could not be here um, first off without y'all in chat, but also yeah. without the support of our sponsors. Uh, first off, we use D and D Beyond for our digital character sheets uh, to access book content, create encounters, um, check exactly how many magic missiles you actually get at each level. Because I don't, I never forget, but other people forget, and that's cool. that's what's up. Um, you can check them out at dndbeyond.com. And our dice trays are provided. Oh, sorry, our dice trays and vaults. I need to get a vault. That's what I need. I need a vault. For my riches, because I'm a dragon. It's fine. Are provided by Wormwood. Um, you can uh, use the code RIVALS for free domestic shipping at wormwoodgaming.com. We are also proud to be sponsored by Die Hard Dice. Um, they, were, they all gave us lovely dice for our characters, which I don't mm-hmm. have to hand right now because I was on a cleaning spree yesterday. And well, that's what's up. You can check them out at dieharddice.com. If you use the code RIVALS, you will get 10% off. There they are. The gorgeous, gorgeous Gosrick set that Masu so has. Oh, shiny. And um, if you want some geeky gear, uh, I, I do like some shirts, some tumblers, some mugs, perhaps, <laughs> you should check out Stormcrow. Uh, hit up shop.stormcrow.com and use the code RIVALS for 15% off. Uh, Masood, can you let me know, is your mug back in the store? Or... It is back in the store. It's okay. temporarily in my possession. But as of tomorrow, this hot, hot item will once again be available on the back pages of the Stormcrow website. Get it while you can. It's going to be shipping to you relatively soon, I think. Fantastic. The code rivals will not get you to the secret back page to order Masood's mug, but it will get you 15% off. (laughs) And um, if you want to sound, I got to do this right. If you want to sound oh so silky smooth like the rivals crew, you should get blue microphones. Go to crew.bluemic.com slash rivals. And... I forgot the rest of that because I got distracted by how awesome this microphone be- makes Sometimes me sound. Sometimes it happens. I really, yeah, like I got totally zone, distracted. Like, you crushed um, it though. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we are also partnered with Idle Champions by Codename Entertainment. You can type exclamation point code for this week's free Electrum chest. Everyone, every one of the rivals is in the game. That is Shaka, Solis, Dahani, Gosric, Kent, and Virgil, as well as some familiars that you may, um, that, that, I was I lost the train of thought, okay. but as well as some familiars that cast members have uh, created for the game and performed as, uh, you can also get. I feel like our almost our sister show, Black Die Society. You can also grab Fen, and now right now you can get Brother Uriah as part of the Grand Revel event. Uh, go ahead, hop in the game and get him for free. Mm-hmm. And um, honestly, when you have all the rivals together, I wish now I'm wishing that there were like a fifteen a 15 person formation so i could have like all the rivals and black die society um i'm kidding don't do that i don't don't fans don't come for me if they all of a sudden add a 15 person formation because whoa um but yeah hop on in the game if you do not have any of these wonderful characters you can wait for a free time gate weekend which is coming up or use those time gate pieces they're just sitting in your bank go ahead yeah. and use them and um and last and certainly never least because this is my favorite part of the ad reads even when i'm not doing them <laughs> We are partnered with Voice Mod. Yeah, hey, yo, do we have anything? I've to only say been about given a few moments to do this Voice Mod ad, so I want to tell you really quickly to go to voicemod.net and use the code RIVALS for 5% off your order, and you can sound like this. Incredible. In time. Time. Incredible. And done. Wow. Amazing. Thank you, Voice Mod. Thank you, Yohaneo. And thank you, Brian, for the ad <laughs> reads for this week. Uh, and as we get into this episode, I got to throw it to the one, the only, Woosh Captain Latia. It's Take me. It. We have a guest. <gasps> guest? Yes. Look at him. Oh. Yes. Is he going to help us, Woosh? He's going to help us. Yeah, he's yep. going to help us, Woosh. Aren't you good? Cool? 
you are. Yeah. Aww. All right. <laughs> He's like, I don't you gotta know learn to look at the on. camera, buddy. You gotta be a bigger ham than this. He's, he's like, please let me down, please. <laughs> uh, you're gonna be my whoosh co captain for today, okay? So, um, I don't he's know like, if you know how to whoosh. I he, he just came from outside, so I'm letting. I was like, you can come upstairs. This is right, so awesome. yeah, I don't know if you've ever whooshed before, so it's gonna be your first whoosh ever. Everybody, get your whooshing apparatuses ready. We're only gonna do one whoosh for one one apparatus for this for this guy because he can't stand yet. He's learning. Anyway, learning. He's learning. You're doing so cute. Blah, blah, blah. Previously, on Rivals of Waterdeep. Whoosh. Whoosh. <laughs> Good job. Oh, no. <laughs> around the mic now. Now, right. I, yeah. now I totally get like not hitting the mic. I'm like, oh, now I get it. Okay. Yeah, 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 you gotta move you around. Matrix, like. Uh, Oh, oh and look at the whooshes in chat go incredible. We it's love so to see good. It. It's so good. Gosh. Good to be back. It's really oh, yeah. nice to be back, y'all. Um, and since we're back, what happened last time that we were together? What was the last thing oh, that we all remember a lot, in, in our season we again? <laughs> that was like five years ago. I don't know. Something like that. Or just a little over a month. <laughs> Come for me like that. <laughs> wow. No, it was five years, fully five years, years. ago. Um, it was. We so we got back from we got back from the stars yeah. from the from the from wild space is it mm -hmm. wild yeah um, with a ship and the yeah ship. yeah we absolutely we it's not a problem it's out in the woods it's fine it's, it's fine <laughs> it's safe and um and we headed back home to find that things were running very smoothly uh brian and duo were kind of on top of stuff yeah. and people were a little surprised to see us return mm-hmm some folks more than others surprised to see us home yeah uh and kent's worst nightmare was confirmed uh when it turns out it wasn't just a big uh misdirect that prince andrew gave us when ta <clears throat> when talking about uh when talking about laryl being behind all of this because it seems that laryl silverhand the open lord of waterdeep decided that we attracted more trouble than we dealt with and were in fact more on the grand scale a danger to Waterdeep than not, which really just broke us all in various ways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so Lara came by the manor. We tried to have a civil conversation. Mm -hmm. She was very snarky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't know if she's like that all the time. Yeah. Or if that was just like her personality that week, but wow. Can you imagine if Mask Lord meetings were all run like that? <laughs> I think the open lord is actually not allowed at the Mask Lord's meeting. There's something about a separation. <laughs> so we're like, no, <laughs> no, this is too much. No, this is too much. <laughs> um, so we tried to we tried to talk it through and kind of made some points and uh uh you know reassured ourselves i guess if nothing else that like the work we were doing was important and good and so laryl said put your money where your mouth is and by money i mean important tchotchkes and pieces of your power and we did it. to see if anyone wanted to take up the narrative <laughs> <laughs> and then we did yeah yeah um we did i mean but we did have like some there was there was good debate we had the people, there was we had we had people speak on our behalf uh laryl turned us into cats mm -hmm. it was fine it was a good time um Meow. we Meow. found <laughs> we discovered that Meow. there there had been <laughs> no way impossible this is the joy this is the joy of live theater dio, anyway. her, dio heard the, the cats dio, the cats was like where where? Um, <laughs> but uh we also discovered that sadly uh we had a uh, spy within our midst uh, uh, mid 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 there's a lot of consonants you got most of yeah. them yeah 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 why are there so many consonants in that there's word so many okay um we had a spy uh, within our ranks who um we had come to trust um one of us more than anyone else on the team and um and yeah, and I will say, I, it was mentioned in chat, but also like a huge thanks to Jasmine Buller, that bronze girl, because mm. incredible, incredible. There is no, nothing could have prepared us for her take <laughs> on Laryl Silverhand. <laughs> Literally it nothing. Was yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> um, nope. But yeah, there, yeah. Um, so we had like a nice aside where it turned out that um, Faye 
was in Laryl's pocket this entire time. Mm. And um, yeah, that's that's a thing. How'd that go, Tanya? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that good, uh, huh? Yeah, it was well, good. Well, yeah. um, I mean, you all saw the discussion that we had. Mm-hmm. Uh, Salise is just she. She's uh, she's <laughs> not okay. Put it that yeah. way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, well, like I always say, it's okay to not be okay. And that That's is right. definitely that is definitely something that you know that is that is a portrayal of the most dire. And there was almost um, almost a murder. Yeah. Well, is it murder? Is it homicide? Is it? A, it's almost a killing. Um, there was an inter. There was a a divine intervention that paused that put it on pause. I suspect um, for the moment. And and Faye did get away. And we eventually were no longer cats. And the people of Waterdeep did let Laryl did basically make the point that the rivals are somewhat good for water deep, even if not in the way that Laryl envisions them being good for water deep. And that's when that is when Laryl challenged us Mm -hmm. to say, well, like, would you become official protectors of water deep and give your power? Oh, I forgot the fact that she also offered Kent a direct job and, and then made him have even more crises. Oh, (laughs) literally I had blocked it from my memory until you said it. I didn't remember that at all because i it melted kent's brain mm. yeah Ugh. um but we we had a like honestly if you even if you're not caught up on rivals of Waterdeep, this this catch-up has ruined it for you anyway so please yeah. go watch the last yeah. like 15 minutes of <laughs> go watch the last 15 minutes of our season finale because it was a brilliant piece of role play and improv and collaborative storytelling from everyone on this cast yeah. and it definitely got us a little bit like okay yeah. Right, yeah. Um and yeah, essentially we did. We created what is a wonderful resource for the people of Waterdeep. It's right outside yes. of our house, which mm-hmm. I'm sure is probably great for foot traffic. Fine. And <laughs> it's fine. And that's pretty much where we ended it with us. Like, I don't really know that Laryl agrees. Like she has not changed her stance exactly, but mm-hmm. she's essentially said, like, this at least shows some meeting in the middle ish. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. It felt like it was an acknowledgement because our biggest argument, right. Was like bad shit happens in big cities. Mm -hmm. And yes, some of it has come for us, but if we weren't there, stuff would have still happened and we're here to protect it regardless of what brings it to the city. And so that was a little bit of our like money where our mouth is. Are we dedicated to water deep? And that was enough for Laryl in the moment, whoever brings the stuff, whatever is the reason for the things that happen to water deep in the future. We've, we've committed to dealing with it. We'll see. I think that's great. And I think yeah. that's a- excellent place to sort of jump in for our episode now thank you brian uh as we uh sort of move forward in time it has been a year since the events of our final uh episode last season and you all find yourself sitting around the table at a mass lords meeting taking in the problems of the city and the issues that are occurring um, you look around and notice that there are a few spots missing, uh, particularly Gazrick seat. And as you all remember, um, having a little bit of a moment of crises after confronting the fact of he wasn't a socialist, but rather just doing philanthropy, Gazrick left you all a note where he said, Dear rivals, I am leaving to the wilds. I've been around civilization so long that I feel I have lost touch of what is important. Forgot to do his voice. <laughs> leaving Luo and Brian in charge of Nimrods, leaving Leaf in charge of the kitchens, and leaving the rivals in charge of yourselves. There will be no healing, so be careful. <laughs> I've ah, left you each two potions true. of superior healing and three potions of supreme healing for the group. Manage them as you need. Wait a second, say that part again. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> receives, every one of you, gets two potions of superior healing Mm. and there are three potions of supreme healing for the group y'all y'all he's giving us healing i am afraid yes i guess gosrick forgot that i'm here 
Oh, okay. I, it's hey. funny. As but, as Masood said that, I realized like any time that we kind of need, any time we kind of needed the major healing, like one or the other of you has been in the DM chair and only your <laughs> like it's kind of funny. True. Over the time. Yeah. And it's like, did you forget about Celise? I'm like, well, we did, but she's sort of like being narrowly well, uh, led. You know, also like, like, to be fair, paladins have their lay on hands, but Gosric had heal, which is yeah. what ninety okay. HP or something. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and so <laughs> the suppo- the potions of supreme healing will they're like 10 d4 plus 20 so like those are the big ones and then uh the potions of superior healing that each of you got should keep you tightened over a little bit um so he leaves this note he sees he signs it um and he's gone things seem to run smoothly in that time and as you're all back at the meeting um there's a lot of bureaucratic conversation that's occurring and it's natural for your minds to drift. And so as your mind drifts, Us? I'd love to hear uh, what you think about. What sort of reflections occur to you in the year since the founding of the fountain? And how has your life sort of mm-hmm. um, been impacted in that time? And I can roll a dice, but if somebody wants to go first, I'll also offer that to you all. I just want to say the founding of the fountain sounds really cool. Yeah, that's that. the first. That's the first book of a trilogy, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll go first, sure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. What did I do? Yeah. A book report on Peter Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um. Let's see. What did Tahani do? Well, she okay. She definitely left Waterdeep for a while. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So I think after the founding of the fountain, Mm -hmm. which is going to be the great, this thing uh, that I'm going to think about this episode. Mm -hmm. um, She actually, before she left, she went to go willingly talk to Walter. (gasps) And so you make your way towards uh the castle lander estate where walter has been in their servitude for since he's since been, he got here since he got here uh and you see him outside just sort of uh run around a couple documents talking to some of those workers and he turns to you uh, across the bushes uh, he looks and he says oh that's me and he comes running over little flight skip as he comes by he says hey bud what's going on i haven't seen you in forever yes there's a Correct. Uh, hi. Um, I have a question. Okay. Why did you come here? To the, to the Castle Lantern Estate? Uh, I mean, to Waterdeep in general. Oh, I mean, well, I wanted to explore the world outside of Shult, um, and the only person who really did that recently was you. So I thought, hey, this could be a good place to start. So you followed me? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, birds of a feather got to f- uh, fly together. I learned that phrase along the way, and I'm I'm trying to reclaim it. Hmm. Um. Would you say that you're having a good time? Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, Highlock treats me great. You know, I've gotten a real power position in the Castle Lantern Estate, even though I'm not a Castle Lantern, which is great because there's a lot of vacancy that had opened up before Highlock arrived. Uh, yeah, still haven't figured that out, but we're having a good time, you know? I'm, I'm managing things. I have my own job. I'm not just, like, doing what I thought I could. I'm doing what I never thought was possible. You're happy with this? Yeah, that's pretty good. Do you notice I like some more PTO, but, hey, who doesn't? Every time he answers her, she, like, leans back a bit because his answers are so loud and forceful that she's just like, oh, you are so much right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Why do you ask? Have you, what, you thinking about leaving Waterdeep or something? You want a, you want a buddy? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> um... Someone clever would notice that she's only really answering the questions about whether or not she she wants him to come with. Um, but no, I just 
I don't know. You're the only person from Chelsea that I've seen in, in since I've left. And uh, I guess I just had some questions about why you did it. Yeah, I mean, it was tough back home for a while. I, I wasn't the biggest bird in the, in the group. I often mm -hmm. couldn't fly faster than the others. You know, uh, and I, opportunities were slim. And I think the notion of trying something new that people didn't think I was capable of um, kind of put a little little fire in me. And so I I kind of took off and I, I told I had a great adventure along the way just arriving here, um, which you can listen to if you listen back to season 10, one of the introductions, I think it's episode six. Um, but yeah, you know, and uh, since getting here, it's been nice finding my own way and and doing my own thing. I thought I was going to join the rivals, honestly, because that's what you did. You know, you were at the Castle Lanterns, and then you joined the rivals. And I was like, oh, I'll go to the Castle Lanterns, and then I'll join the rivals. But then I was like, Walter, why don't you join the rivals? What do you want to do with the rivals? And I was like, nothing. They got their own messes that they're constantly cleaning up. That seems like too much work. <laughs> Get a stable job, do my own thing, and you know kind of make my own name for myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jahani's gone on a full face journey. <laughs> a full, like, the journey from Chult to Waterdeep yeah. is shorter than the face journey she just <laughs> went on. Um, yeah, I didn't, I mean, you know, uh, when I, it wasn't intentional, my joining the rivals. It was a, a whole thing. Mm. That is too long for, uh, too long to explain. But if you go to see a season six, like episode six or seven, you can get the whole gist of how everything went down. Um, <laughs> all these callbacks. It's good. Um, but yeah, like I didn't intend on joining the rivals either. I mean, be real, to be honest with you, I didn't really know what I was coming here to do. I just knew I wanted to leave. You still feel like leaving? Because it kind of feels like you've been here. Leaving here? No, no. I mean, you felt like you wanted to leave, but when did that feeling of wanting to leave stop? Because it felt like it kind of stopped here, right? I mean, yeah, I went to places before I came here, but yeah, when I got here and when I found the rivals and just kind of ended up with them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like you found what you were searching for when you wanted to go? More or less? Hmm. I don't know, man. Okay. Sometimes you just got to think about things. Just have a loft in the sky and just let the minds go. Yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. And with, like, the most abrupt exit ever, she's up and gone. You want a buddy? Okay, they're gone. That's fine. Okay, hey, Hylock. Yeah, Walter turns around to go talk to Hylock really fast. Uh, and so what happens to uh, Tahani in that time after this conversation? Uh, just sort of what goes through her mind or how does she spend her time since then? So she's definitely, she's she's doing a, she's doing a bit of a fly. She's yeah. uh, thinking about that conversation and everything that's happened over the last couple of years. And like, she never considered whether or not her she'd found her place until last year, mm -hmm. last year, when the idea that she was doing more harm than good to the place that she'd been living in for a while had actually become a thing. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I think this particular day she goes on flyabout, mm -hmm. but then at some point in this year, there's also a note from her that says, um, gone back to Chult. I'll be back. I need a new scarf and some other stuff. And it's signed to Hani. And it's also, it's like on the stack of notes that Duo and Brian have. Yeah. Because no one forgets to leave a note now, which we love. Yeah, uh, we always so leave notes. We'll come back to your time on Shul at a later point, but I love this. You'll go on your own journey. You're now back um, at this meeting, and for some moment, you clock back in, and you hear um, the current resolution that's being talked about. 
one of the masked members brings up. Now, the field ward has been in an issue with control, okay? Trade has been restricted after some members of the city guard were attacked by the denizens of the ward. And uh, tensions are running high after the blockade was put around Trollgate. And something is preventing the ships from docking and unloading. And you know how it is. The city guard don't patrol the field ward. And the city, wa- uh, so, sorry, the city watch don't patrol the field ward because that's, they handle their own justice. And the city guard's only responsibility is to handle the gates. So we're looking for a solution that uh, if anyone's got any options. I know the Hawk Winters are thinking about getting another contract under their belt, kind of like, going in there cleaning up the mess uh but i'd love to see if there are any other options from the group any other suggestions and if you want to roll anyone wants to roll me a history check or a, like an understanding of like the field ward or anything that's sort of like about this issue you totally can uh, hmm. I believe that I am aware that the field ward is way up in the north of the city and is sort of like the outskirts of the city, right? It is part of Waterdeep, but it's a little bit, like you said, the the watch doesn't really patrol it. It's not, in many ways, it's not really a ward of the city. If you, certainly if you ask some of the more noble folks in Waterdeep, is, am I getting the vibe right here for the field ward? You're a hundred percent right. And I love you didn't even need a roll for it. That's incredible. I am. I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, well, you gave yeah. me lots of context clues too. Take I'm credit. Good. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, the big thing, like, sort of about it. Um, yeah. Did anyone roll history or no? Yeah. Tell did someone else find more. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got a. I got a sixteen. Sixteen. Great. So um, you remember and sort of understanding a little bit about Waterdeep and learning from some of the folks that since the issue of the spell plague, like over a hundred years ago, it kind of became the refuge for a lot of the refugees that were coming and staying in Waterdeep. And more often than not, the fact that attacked seems unlikely in terms of what happened between the city guard, there might be something more there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, do you remember where in the woods you parked the ship? I think we said it was a, I mean, it was about a mile. I think we said it was like we walked about a mile outside in it. So whatever, like the, the most densely wooded, like yeah. just that, just, just outside of on the way. Yeah. Um, Which where the North ward is situated right yeah. underneath the field ward would be right sort of around there. Ah, mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Mm-hmm. It's, it's probably fine. fine. It's probably, probably fine. fine. Yeah, it's probably fine. Um, Kent will uh will do whatever it is that the masked lords do to be recognized in council, mm-hmm. uh, and will uh yeah will respond and just say. <sighs> Over the past year, we have seen significant improvement to the people in the North Ward and surrounding wards simply by virtue of a public works project. The fountain that was, we're all masked, right? And our voices are altered. So I guess yeah. technically I, I, they don't know I'm Kent, but like it's going to be real obvious here in a minute. It's, it's, it's uh, yeah. the, the fountain that the, gr- <clears throat> the rivals of Waterdeep uh, and our open lord Uh, placed in the North Ward has done uh, immeasurable good for the community. And I think that is the model that we need to bring to the field ward. Uh, The guard and the watch clearly are not welcome in that area for various reasons that, frankly, I don't think we can blame on the citizens of the field ward. I think we need to find ways to bring public works, infusions of funds, and just build up the field ward so that they feel a part of the city. And then we can deal with some of these other issues once they've been, once their troubles have been addressed. Oh, you hear one of the guys across the room goes, but who has the time to do a survey of all the things that are wrong and who's going to trust them? No one in the field world trusts anyone except for those from the field ward. If you go in and try to engage with them, it's just easier this way. And we need to get our goods going. The, do you know how much time it takes since the troll go, since the troll gate has been shut down? 
Now, when things come in from the northernmost part of the city, it has to go all the way through the field war. And just so happens, merchants are losing goods along the way. What do you say to our tradesmen in the merchants ward and in the south ward who have to rely on that? This is going to take too long to fix. Kent at this point. Straight up snoozing. <laughs> She's snoozing again. Yeah, <laughs> just back out. <laughs> uh i think i think at that point uh yeah. kent has also a, a little bit started to wander uh and think yeah. about his experiences in the field ward of which he's had a few over the past year so his mind starts to wander and he doesn't immediately respond i don't think if anyone else has something well yeah there was no plot like if there yeah. was a plot for virgil to even be caught up on he has completely like he's like yeah. what uh. <laughs> Celise is cleaning her nails with a knife. She is incredible so and interested. Well, I'd love to, in this moment, the conversation sort of continues. And yeah. you have a moment where uh, we cut to, yeah, well, we'll talk about you, honey. Well, what's going on in Ken's sure. mind since it's starting to drift right away? Yeah. So as soon as the other mass lord starts bringing up the, um, shipments and supplies brought in through the troll gate mm -hmm. and that some have gone missing. Kent starts thinking back to just a few weeks after the fountain was, was made. Um, and the rivals had finally sort of found a little bit of their equilibrium again. Uh, you know, daily routines had restarted because we'd also been gone for a while. So we hadn't had the non adventuring. We're back at troll skull routine in a while. So we'd all just sort of started to get that back together. And you know, nothing was attacking the city. Nothing was pulling us away from the city. Nothing was kidnapping us and throwing us into space. And Kent really was having a hard time. Uh, even after everything that happened, which ended fairly well with the fountain, Kent just had a lot of doubts and questions about, you know, he'd come around that we are, in fact, good for the city. But how sustainable is that? Mm -hmm. How long can we really be? the protectors of Waterdeep. You know, the truth is, though our intentions are good and though we are doing on the whole, on the grand scale, good for this city, some of Laryl's arguments were true. Bad things do come after us here. And sort of for several weeks, Kent sort of spiraled into this, like, I don't know what I'm doing or why I'm doing it or what the future, like the long-term future could possibly hold. And so he decided after he sort of pulled himself out of that with obviously uh, Virgil and the rest of the rivals help mm -hmm. um, decided to start just dipping his toe in non troll skull related non adventuring or adventuring adjacent, I suppose, uh, work mm -hmm. just to see how he could function in the real world as a non-adventurer and the first job that he got was uh as a caravan guard for merchants bringing stuff into the city and it was terrible yeah um, and he's no go ahead no, please no, go no, ahead absolutely it was you're, bad you're it's tough you're you're there and it's you're doing mercenary work by yourself usually uh, like recently you've had the group the squad but you're trying to do your own thing discover it on your own and part of that has to be on your own right and yeah it was it was always sort of like yeah I, I, it was so swingy for him right yeah. he was either like he's so used to being attacked by like space monsters that the band of of bandits coming up like didn't even register as a threat to him yeah. or he like <laughs> killed a lot of people bandits who were coming but like would either go way not enough attention to the problem at hand right. or which he's done before yeah hashtag rats uh goes way too far uh see, in his in executing his duty you see the the person who's sort of managing the mercenary service that's been hiring you back again and he said um his name's uh far noon and he's like hey now kent he's got his uh sort of really large uh, shoulders and hair braided up. And he's looking at you with a little bit of sympathy in his eyes as he says, you're good, kid. You're you're pretty good. Um, you, you, honestly, you're like 50% too good, if that makes sense. 
Um, fifty percent of the time, not enough. Uh, and I get it. A lot of these bandits, some of them are young. Yeah, yeah I've noticed none of the bodies left behind tend to be uh, without a little experience. Ken doesn't know what to say because every time it happens, he like immediately knows he remembers. Yeah. Uh, so he just sort of is like, um, listen, this was a very kind attempt at the you're overqualified for this job mm -hmm. uh, conversation. And I appreciate that. Um, I think maybe we have both learned a lot from this experience. And yeah. uh, maybe it's time I moved on. No, absolutely. And um, I appreciate your time here. And he's like winces as he moves up. And you see he's yeah. got a bandage on his side with like a I, blade. Listen, I'm so sorry about that. I really, I, I didn't realize quite how jumpy I was. I thought you were, a, well, you know. No, it's no, no. no. And you, that the I antidote. just took you for a. Oh, I, I get it. Uh, you, we, yeah. it, that's part of mercenary work. And um, I well, appreciate and to it. be super clear, you don't look like a beholder I, it was yeah. just in that moment i mm -hmm. you know so apologies truly sure sure it was dark and my hair swung in front of my face like a beholder's yeah. eye stock would I, I i get it i'm so glad you get it because mm -hmm. you know it's been nice having you ken um yeah, it's been nice me, being here yeah if you need a letter of recommendation i i'll yeah. do it i'll, I'll great. I, I, i'm worried what happened if i don't honestly totally I'll, I'll, yeah yeah yeah, I mean, that makes me feel kind of bad, but uh, thank you for the offer, and I will let you know. Perfect. Yeah, uh, bye. <laughs> and so we pull back from this moment as Kent's contemplating some of the Kent's more intricacies. masked face just in his hands right. as he remembers stabbing his <laughs> boss because he thought he was a beholder. Uh, and you see her, one of the guys uh, back in the room go, unless someone volunteers, to undertake this survey task themselves. I'm just gonna let the, I, I vote to have the Hawk winners take it. Um, I don't know. Don't mind the Hawk winners doing it. I mean, yeah, they're not. Mm. They tried to kill us. They you tried to so kill us. Ago. Weren't they hired by someone for that though? You're right. I mean, listen, it, I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm saying at this point, Kent is like, no, they're okay. <laughs> yeah, Virgil, uh, Virgil leans forward. And I, I just, I actually have a lovely time imagining that these, these, these masks are giving us the weirdest voices ever and says, I think having the Hawk Winters perform the survey would be good with some oversight to make sure that they're not too heavy handed in dealing with the denizens of the field ward. Hmm. Do you volunteer? To handle this oversight or at least i lead will the... i i believe i have agents that can do so yes wonderful all right all those approve see hands go up do we do hands is it robert's rules what the heck yeah, yeah. all those uh <laughs> all those in <laughs> deny <laughs> yeah it's honestly presidential <laughs> procedure really still works across Listen, the planes uh it's universal yeah motion carries gavels down all right Next order of business. Stormhaven Island and Deepwater Isle have fallen in disrepair. And kind of been a lot of corruption been taking place. Smugglers have been having easier access to illicit channels and um, not enough resources from the city are uh, there and staffing to fix it. Any solutions for the folks? Uh, right now on the table, we're kind of just thinking we shut down the southern ports and uh, restructure it with one of the major families, either Langolan, Full, or Ghost. They're kind of all competing for the bid with the city. Um, but otherwise, we're just gonna kind of been struggling with that uh, real smuggler problem. I don't think shutting down these ports is a solution. Well. We could divert traffic towards the sea ward, and uh, I mean, obviously, the businesses of the dock ward would suffer for momentarily 
portion of time. But once they reopen, you know, the the businesses that have survived that struggle will clock right back up. Why don't we just send people to fix these things instead of debating about it? Oh, that would be nice. But unfortunately, we as a group, uh, our our staffing is pretty shorthanded. A lot of people don't really want to do municipal work when you can be an adventurer. Um, And so if there were folks who were interested in perhaps looking over the going out to Stormhaven Island and looking at Deepwater Isle, hey, the more the merrier. Have you actually solicited for workers? I mean, we put up job listing and postings, but... Um, How much does it pay? I mean, your rate? Or are you talking about on, on the board rate? On the board. What does the board rate say? Oh, it, it's one gold piece per day. Hmm. That's better than I thought you were going to say. I mean, upon completion. If you don't... No, 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 no. You pay people daily so they can eat. It takes months to do this work. Well, we need to have a completion of results to then offer payment. It's it's part of the That's system. Not, we... Landlords aren't going to wait months for their money. You Ugh. you give people half a half of their pay each week. That way, they've got to come back and finish the work. Mm, that is a good idea. I will run it up the flagpole to see if we can change the way our system works. Aren't um, we the flagpole? Uh, yeah, but that's not on today's Black agenda. Pole. We got oh. to we're, we're changing the agenda. All in favor of uh, changing this point to of procedure. Half, <laughs> yeah, uh, all in favor of changing this to half on accepting of job and half on completion. Aye. 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 The four of your hands go up, 12 hands stay down. Oh. Unless you guys, wow. does anyone want to make a persuasion check to see if that's a different. Uh, oh, I'll do an well, intimidation check. Go for it. Well, Absolutely. Yeah. Other people. That's sixteen right? people are in this group. Help um, I people? I will make a yeah. I'll make a persuasion check. You guys well. are powerful. You like the four of you right now with Gosric. You would have been a fourth of this room, right? There's twenty um, people total. Um, right now, you've got a little less sway power wow. just in terms of Virgil. bodies. Yeah, and I Virgil. cannot wow. believe this. Yeah, <laughs> what are these roles? <laughs> Tell me for the What's folks at the... home. So I'm going to take a photo and send this to you all because there's no way this could happen. I have advantage and a plus eight. I got a net one on both guys. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, so Lee I mean, says I, I exactly double, what yeah. you said, like, but I not until later. With advantage, like a season. Yeah. Ago, so yeah. Got it. It's um, got to go both ways. Got to go. Yeah. I hate and, this. And yeah, I, I mean, Virgil like kind of does the does the clearing of the throat to say, well, we have, you have already mentioned that we have these families with resources interested in vying for control over this. It seems it would actually be better if we get them to combine their resources, which show mm. much less favoritism towards these high ranking families. And I believe that if they were all to apply their resources to benefit the city in which we all live in and benefit from, it would get this job done faster. Okay, I mean that's a great idea, but someone's gonna have to be an intermediary intermediary between the Langolan, the Fall, and the Ghost family. Is that something you would volunteer to do? Um, I don't see Virgil already volunteered for something else. Like, look, I like I can't be out here volunteering all day. Okay, like we've um, had dealings with the Langolan and the Falls, so that's mm-hmm. two thirds of the way there for any rival. Yeah. We yeah again, mm-hmm. again there there are absolutely people that we can employ to have these discussions. Mm-hmm. It it seems ridiculous to allow these issues to stonewall simply because because it's it's just us. We have considerable power and influence with or without these masks. All right. Well, I mean, if you all feel like you can oversee it in some capacity, uh, perhaps have some more of your agents get in on the job themselves and then report back. You know, you want us you all try out that pay system and then we'll implement it if it works out for you. All those in favor? 12 hands go up. I'm putting my hand up. We're rich. We don't need this. 
I feel like that's everyone. Fair point. Yeah, that's a problem. Is rich? Yeah. Rich is at a keep different forgetting scale at this point. How yeah. much right. money we um, have? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, they'll they'll be there. They'll I'll I'll let this one go unanimous because yeah. this, mm-hmm. this is this is grown. Perfect. And so fires. At this moment, uh, <laughs> it, it, you kind of they shuffle on, moving over to the next topic, um, and your minds start to drift again, getting into as the bureaucracy continues. Um, who wants to talk about what they reflect on in their year? Um, Vir- Virgil's like again between nodding off and not nodding off like yeah. the conversations about the field ward and the north ward and seaward sea ward mm-hmm. i keep getting it wrong every time um virgil's kind of reflecting on the year where after as much as kent has been trying basically walking in 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 new paths virgil has been exploring water deep um, he has been he has been going to you know he that's the reason he was like well we'll just deal with it because he's been to the field ward he's mm-hmm. been he's been to the sea ward the he's looked at the city of the dead which is weird but okay mm-hmm. um and um especially the the dock ward and the southern ward so like trying to explain that you're that you're having problems with shipping is is something that he's concerned with but he's mm-hmm. been going and the conversation with Laryl also did stick with him as to whether they're good for water deep so he has been He's been essentially like wandering through the city. I'm not sure whether he's recognized or not, Mm -hmm. but trying to solve like trouble, little problems, big problems. We've handled the North Ward, but no one in the other wards knows us and knows that we are here to do good. Mm -hmm. So Virgil's sort of not like vigilanteing, but if he's been on walkabout and seen someone who needs help or needs needs something he's been trying to help in that way mm-hmm. and so i think this is a great moment we come upon you having just saved uh you know this kind of like young tiefling who was clearly being shook up for money after you did like a few win oh yeah how did you dispatch the person who was coming after him i don't want to rob you of your creative license i, oh. I was about to and i was like no no, no. you don't want to it'll be better <laughs> if you decide um in general, Virgil's kind of resisted using any kind of magic or powerful spells, mm-hmm. but using the, 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 like essentially drawing the power and letting people know it's there. He's mostly been, he's mostly been persuading and mm-hmm. he's mostly had just that aura of this mm-hmm. can go much worse. Yeah. Um, so he's mostly been talking to people because he wants to help people, but he also does not want to appear like this scary force of nature unless he has to for sure and this guy you he watches you talk the dude down from mugging uh, him and sort of puts his knife back and walks away around the corner and as he gets up the young tiefling looks at you and says that was amazing you just when i talked to him all he wanted to do was rob me you you talked him into stop how, how, how'd you do that something you get with experience but also i simply convinced him that perhaps he'd be better off trying his hand at a different method of making money i uh, i couldn't do any of that i I was trying to think of something but i just it's like my mind froze and i I, i'm so sorry i'm so rude thank you i'm laren laren Nice to meet you. I'm Virgil. Virgil. Hi. Uh, do you need an apprentice? I don't believe I need an apprentice. Um, but to offer um to offer your skills in such a way, what are you what are you good at? Oh, I forgot to ask, where where in the city are we? Like in the well, opening. Just you tell me, you've been Just walking around. I would say if in this sort of understanding i might even place you oh probably in the traders ward oh, sorry the okay. trades ward this sort yeah. of a way uh this individual is walking around probably he mentions like yeah i was um looking to get into a guild and sort of find a job i've been kind of looking around and i don't know i it just seemed incredible and i, I just didn't know if you were hiring i 
I don't believe that I can say that I'm hiring. However, do you have any particular skill that you can, you can apply your hand to? I mean, not, not something I'd like to brag about a lot, but, um, he does a cantrip for you, just gust and you watch it as it occurs. You check for a moment. Give me, give me like a perception check or an arcana, one or the other. That'll be perception. Okay. <laughs> but nine. It's a nine. Okay, it's a nine. Yeah. There's something in the air. You don't see it, but the gust moves almost like yours. Do you, are you, how, how do you come by this ability? I, I don't know. My, uh, my family kind of threw me out when they found out that I could do this. Um, and it's been good. I've been making it on my own. You know, I've been figuring things out. It's, it's been a whole thing. Um. But I, 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 you know, growing up in water deep in, in, in the dock ward originally and, and just sort of moving around, I, I've picked up a few things in the city. And at, at hearing that, um, just, do you have a place to stay? Yeah, everyone's got a place to stay. And have you eaten? Definitely in my life. <laughs> um <laughs> Um all right Virgil tosses him a gold piece. Wow. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh really thought I was going to lose all my money and he takes it out and he it like puts the gold piece in with his like one silver piece. Uh Thank you so much. Um, it, by the way, if if you do end up hiring, uh, you just go to the dock ward, ask around about me. I, I, I'll be there. Um, do, you, do you have a good reputation or just a reputation? You know, people tell what they tell. Uh, but uh, if you... I've got, I've got a reputation that's pretty good, I think. Um, you know, particularly if you happen to hit up, a, you know... Mother Jatha's. I do a little work out there sometimes. She can speak on my behalf. I I wish that I could offer you more of an opportunity. I wish mm -hmm. that 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 myself and my compatriots were hiring, mm -hmm. but we don't really have an apprentice sort of situation. I will say if you are if you're Ever in need, you can find Troll Skull Manor in the North Ward. Whoa, are you are you one of the rivals? As I said, you can find Troll Skull Manor in the North Ward. <laughs> and oh my God, with abilities like you, with abilities like yours, perhaps you should see if anyone in the Dock Ward is hiring. Uh -oh. If you can, if you can manipulate the wind like that perhaps as your skills grow you will find people will appreciate those talents okay I, i'll i'll try it i've never really been much of a boat guy but i'll give it a shot boat guy that's the correct term um yeah. i uh i find it's something that you pick up along the way mm. as long as you're not afraid of hard work no never um and we pull away from this moment as we come back uh, to the group. And for whatever reason, there's something strikes about this conversation. Uh, you're thinking about the places that you went to. And, so, and when you hear the word city of the dead, your attention focuses back in. Now, the Melshimber family has discovered the city of dead is kind of in a poor state. Um, 
you know, we all know after the state of the spell plague, uh, when the, you know, the walking statues came to life and started attacking the folks, um, apparently looters had been making their way into the graves and the shrines of the crypts because uh, part of the protections over the city of the dead uh, fell through in that moment. And this went unnoticed for so long because the Hawk Winter guards who've been placed on there on their perpetual contract um, are not there to protect the graves. A reminder, they are rather to protect the city from the occasional restless undead creature. You know, their job, make sure the ghouls stay in. So if human beings are coming in and out of, with uh, some stuff, they don't really care, especially since um, a lot of them get paid off by those folks who are grave robbing. Um, if we want to update the contract with the Hawk winners, we'd have to include a new cause. We'd have to increase the amount that we're paying them. Um, we have some solutions on the table. Technically, this is all Vajra Safar's fault um, as the Black Staff is technically responsible for the previous Black Staff to Sara Shadrin. They, they had promised the city had been restored after the dealings of the Spell Plague, but um, we could always just force them to deal with it. Sounds like a cleric problem to me. Okay. Why don't uh, we why don't we get the oh what was we have been there in a season, the the sort of amalgam uh uh oh, the House temple of in the hands. city. House of Inspired Hands, thank you. That has a bunch of different deities represented, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why don't we get the House of Inspired Hands involved? See if they can't uh consecrate some of the city of the dead back to where it was. That should take care of some of the the undead problems free up the guards to guard the site itself rather than well, the city from the site. The issue that we would have, and we would love to do that. It's a great idea. But right now the Hawk winners are only contracted to kill. Oh, I see. I that see, is I see. their only job. Uh, so to deal with the looters and like the Malshimber family, uh, they've been pretty upset because a lot of their family relics have been lost. And a lot of the other important members of our, uh, you know, um, as he's struggling to find the words, you realize that those people are here. It's You're people right. at this table. Right, 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 whose right. Families are being robbed from and like being right. dealt with. And it, like this individual is just like, yeah, we're, we're doing the best. Uh, <laughs> we're trying to find a solution here to more or less um, handle these wannabe Tomb Raiders. Uh, mm. We could pin it on Vajra. I mean, that seems like an okay idea. That no. does not seem like an okay idea. Well, I mean, no, legally it's technically okay because if the vault And the there's a lot of things that are legal but not okay. Well, also, how does that solve any problem? Well, I mean, it gives them mm. and then they'll solve it and then we'll feel good about it. Oh, it's here. That doesn't have the same way to it that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I think this is great because this conversation is going to go around and round for a little bit. I'd love mm -hmm. to see as these like wealthy families just start bickering about their like families, like jewels just being stolen and plundered from beneath them. Uh, where does uh, Salisa's mind go as they kind of hit a moment of reflection of being like, what am I doing here? Uh, Celise is just like I could be tracking Faye down. I could be doing anything else with this. Yeah, how's that mm. quest been? Tracking Faye down. It's been interesting. I've mm. I've chased her. I've chased her through parts of Waterdeep. Yeah, had a slight dip into the Faye realm. Didn't like that. Um. And I heard she maybe possibly could be hiding in Barovia, but mm -hmm. that wouldn't work out for her or me because, well, she's a drow and I can just see people having use for her that she may not like. Not that I care, but I want to finish the conversation we started when when everything went to pieces. And I think that's a great sort of moment to think about because there was let's go to the moment you found where she had been staying the last place she'd been staying in Waterdeep before mm -hmm. she dipped out 
we open in on this apartment and you kind of see a mess hastily packed clothes sort of really uh ramshackled put together there's not really much rhyme or reason to why the chairs on its side but other than someone's rush to get out of here as you go through um give me an investigation check oh boy hopefully my dice will be better to me than they were last time <laughs> That's so much better. That is a 19. It's a 19. Incredible. You see um, somehow, in some way, the rush, the panic, underneath their bed, a little notebook sticking slightly out. Okay. What do you do? Um, I pick it up and start flipping through it for clues. And you see it. It's basically phase like bullet journal. It's the things that they sort of put down of their list of things that they were going to accomplish that day, sort of their to-do lists. And you start realizing in this moment how close you were so often and how often there's written as sleases on my tail, I need to keep moving. Can't stay here long, need to keep moving. Laro's protection's out, need to keep moving. And this idea of never being safe, sort of page after page, that's the last thing on that to-do list. Got to keep moving. Um, you see, uh, Fen walk up next to you, nudges paw underneath your uh thigh as he's uh looking at you. You read that, he looks up at you. I reach down and give him a, a pet, mm -hmm. tell him he's a good boy, mm -hmm. sniffs the room. Growls. Oh, Proceeds fine, to go. Mm -mm. Give me a perception check or insight check on Fen. Oh boy. Uh you mean my dog my good doggo? Your good dog. I'll give you advantage on that. Thanks for that reminder. Not that when you go in the dice show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so much better. Um, you said investigation or Oh no, insight or um just like you're just trying to know what's going on in your dog's head. Uh 21. Perception. 21. He recognizes the smell of uh this apartment and who it belongs to. And mm. you see the upsetness sort of crinkle across his nose as he then proceeds to wait outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I flipped through, see, can I find anything, anything she might have left behind beside this notebook? Uh, yeah, you go through, and I'm going to let that 19 ride. Uh, the notebook is the most major sort of uh, piece of knowledge that you gain out of this, other than a couple, like what seems to be like invoices of travel plans to uh, leave uh, Waterdeep. And that what sets mm -hmm. you off on sort of the journey of realizing that she's no longer in the city and what you're continuing of your quest throughout the year. Um, and so we cut back uh, at this moment to the table and the folks are still going round and round they're like someone's got to handle this and i think that if we could just it's the black staff's fault we don't want anyone directly to get involved and if we need a neutral party someone who doesn't have any not saying that someone from a royal family would rob another royal family's tomb i'm not saying that no one here at the table is saying that. But wouldn't it be safer if we had a third party get involved that wasn't a member of any of these families? You're muted. So much outsourcing. I've lived in Chicago a little bit, and I've been paying attention to a lot of that work. I'm just like, I, I, you've nailed just how so much I'm sorry no how this dreary. meeting wants to do anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Can I roll? Well. Yeah. I would love to roll an insight check because I don't want to say it outright yeah. because it's kind. It's probably really based on the arguments of this last discussion. It'll be yeah. really. It'll be a little bit more obvious to to know that the person who's saying this is one of the rivals. 
I want to roll insight to see if he's trying to foist this off on the rivals. Absolutely. Give me a, give me a little sure. Ooh. Yeah, that's a 27. Yeah, Ooh. dude, absolutely. And this has been a note this past year. Like, truly, ever since you've been made protectors of the city by Laurel, the mass lords have been using that to handle disputes that they can't resolve amongst themselves. Yeah. This is yeah. another in a long laundry list where they've been like force wanting you all to be the intermediaries. Okay. And I think Laurel has been letting this happen in a lot of ways. The idea yeah, of yeah. you guys like, hey, put your money where your mouth is, has kind of been this attitude that she's let have occur within these sure. meetings. Um, so I don't know in terms for you all what that as it's been a laundry list is this another one that you take on or what do you all say in this moment i'm gonna leave it to you i think kent has been very quick to agree to any and all of this stuff as yeah. part of his like i don't know thing mm -hmm. to the point where i imagine he has been told in no uncertain terms to stop just saying yes immediately and to wait mm -hmm. and check in with the other yeah because i'm sorry i was mm -hmm. I'll wait <laughs> Um, but I, uh -huh. but I'm curious to hear from the rest of folks, like if we have been taking most all or few or very few of these things on. I know Virgil's in a similar situation to Kent, where like he's wanted to do, he's wanted to do everything and be everywhere, and and has been run ragged over the past year, like, and is a little bit done, like whatever imagined penance they feel like we need to do, mm. like have we not? by now proven that like we're capable but the city was plenty capable before we came along right mm -hmm. i think dahani has been very much the same way like just uh, like that that exactly it's like yes we have been all of us have been so yeah like i I'm eager in a sense to to help the city out to okay i know I know <laughs> most of us <laughs> have been <laughs> eager <laughs> to help the city out in in the ways that we are capable. But yeah, at this point, they're running us ragged. Yeah. And, you know, if they keep doing it, when something serious happens that we're actually needed for, we're not going to be at our game. We're not going to be on our A game. And then they'll be like, well, you weren't on your A game and I'm then I want to actually punch somebody, but yeah. But no, yeah. I think the those of us that are here, mm -hmm. like, I think like, like we we know who the four of us are because we were the only four to raise our hands on the whole <laughs> yeah. on the whole prepay sort of thing. So True. <laughs> um yeah. Uh you know what I would with this insight check, I think I'm gonna say behind mm -hmm. my voice mod mask. Um why don't you speak plainly sir it's very clear the people or persons that you would like to handle these uh, handle these situations and i think that we can kind of cut the bullshit okay oh i love okay. this you know if I... we're going to be really honest yes we would love for certain individuals to handle this people who perhaps have experience in crypt delving and archaeology who would be mindful of the delicacy of these goods and and memories that we and other members of riot of water deep want protected um yeah and and <laughs> maybe on. there is maybe perhaps a little personal investment that i mean if we're going to be really really frank we found um a piece of a uniform or a patch was left as one of the looters were leaving from their shoulder and uh it's not a patch anyone here recognizes but maybe someone of this particular group does let's and just say the name out loud I, well i mean don't, we don't do that here <laughs> no but... the, the patch slides across <laughs> and actually uh virgil you instantly recognize it oh no uh oh it's oh, your family no. crest Oh my God! Well, uh, so Kent has been uh, 
like daydreaming as soon as as soon as this person mentioned archaeology, remembering another bad job that Kent <laughs> had where he like was trying to help in like a museum yeah. and just ended up getting fired within days because he kept going around to all of the exhibit like caption things and being like, oh, this is wrong. And just like <laughs> rewriting everything in the museum. Uh, but this crest catches him up short. He like hears that little from or whatever it is from Virgil or the voice modded version thereof. And, and so, just, yeah, absolutely. As you guys are looking at it, the guy just goes on. It's like, now it's not a family we recognize in Waterdeep. And that's part of the issue. It feels like there's maybe someone's constricting a third party of, of thieves to get in here and sort of sell the fa- the value and history of Waterdeep on a black market. I wanted to say something so snarky as Salise. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Yeah, that for this family, um, that would track, that would be accurate. Oh. Seems like you know about them. What does the crest look like? I've never thought about this. Hmm. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to insight while Brian is thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, please, please, please. And t- uh, tell me what you insight on and give me that roll. Because I want to insight on the oh, you seem to know this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 16. 16. The O is telling something like like most things at this meeting, coincidences feel more often like setups because they most often are like setups. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um it is um the crest, it's it's against it. I don't really know what sh- what you call the crest, whatever shape yeah. of the outside thingy, um, but it's against it's against a um, like a night sky, and there's like a sort of a constellation picked out in it, and mm-hmm. um, you can see that the the pic- the the stars in the constellation sort of form like a like almost like a Z, but like the French Z. So there's there's like a small belt going across it. And under it, there, um, there's a, essentially like a, a set of green hills and Thank a moon you. slowly rising from behind the hills, and um, and yeah, that is that is definitely something that Virgil has not seen in a while because they didn't even they didn't even show up when they came for us, um, back when all of us were under suspicion. So yeah, yeah, and. You, it's hard to know why they're involved. It, it might not be a personal reason against you. There might not even be knowledge that you're here. It might just be because it's a good score. You know what I mean? Finding out a bunch of like a, an entire city's wealthiest like resources. It's like getting into the bottom of the museum where all the actual things of value are kept. Like there, that's what's going to be moved. Um, but yeah, and so as this group's sort of discussing it, they're like, we would love if maybe with this expertise, someone out of one of your agents could perhaps handle this. Kent has just been, well, Kent's mask has been blankly staring at uh, <laughs> Virgil's mask this whole time. And just like, <laughs> you, it, it's a good thing that Virgil is speaking because the whole time it's been, at the, at the thing, at the, at the seal, at Virgil, at the seal, at Virgil. At I the love seal, this idea Virgil. of like voice mods don't change body language. Like, no, yeah. but but they but they mask enough that like Kent also is like slowly getting a little closer to Virgil and just trying to see like, does he need me to jump in? I know right. what's happening. I can jump in and say yes or no. I cannot tell if he wants me to say yes or no. What do I do? Yeah, Virgil is, I mean, after basically like kind of identifying to staring down at it and realizing, um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's basically, yeah, it's, it's about money, but it always has been. And it, it doesn't seem like they are trying to set, well, as far as, as far as Virgil can tell, since they've been in Waterdeep, it doesn't seem like his family has followed or tried to set up 
I don't know what you would say, like a member of the family. I've realized now we're just going mm-hmm. to old school mafia terms. Or yeah. <laughs> um, has not tried to set that up in in water deep. So there is a bit of a there is a bit of a, a shock because it's been years since um, aside from like something way, way, way down at the bottom of his trunk. Um, he's seen it. This is. Yes, this is known. And it feels as though this is really a crime of opportunity. Hmm. What forces do we, what, 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 what have we employed to essentially stop these incursions and, and stop these crimes? Well, I, I think first things foremost might be uh, someone who might not have the same incentive to rob these crypts should visit and get a lay of the land and then maybe understand how they're getting in and out of Waterdeep with these uh, historical pieces. I can only imagine that you perhaps already have a solution in (laughs) mind to investigate this particular problem. Well, there has been some talk with um, the biddies have been working on a way of recreating the magical protection over the city of dead. I'm so sorry. I just have to take a moment to officially acknowledge that the biddies are a metro recognized organization absolutely a hundred no one i'm obsessed <laughs> they are all powerful for their own reasons i the black staff don't do anything to the biddies like, like oh the biddies do their thing and so they're like yeah, no, the, the biddies offered to uh protect the city of the dead in terms of the magical components to like re-engage over the spell sure. plague and you know we thought about forcing the black staff to handle it but if the biddies can act as the inter- intermediary. We're happy with that. Um, but the actual boots on the groundwork inside the tomb, unfortunately, the biddies also, they've got lineage in Waterdeep. They've got history in Waterdeep. And I'm not saying sure. that they would take something for their families, but or from their families and take it out. There might be a powerful relic. Who knows what power they could gain from the hip bone of one of their ancestors. It uh, is... On magic's weird, guys. It's really Magic detailed weird. and specific. <laughs> yeah. It's really yeah. specific. Just saying. Mm. But uh, if perhaps your agents are on board, uh, we can make an approval of that. Does that sound good? <sighs> this and no more. Ooh. That actually works out for us because that's the last resolution on today's agenda. <laughs> so all in favor, say aye. Every aye. hand go up. All right, aye. all opposed, nay. Motion carries. Uh, wonderful. This has been a great meeting. We'll see you guys in six weeks. Uh, now everyone uh, have a good time in the between. And so <laughs> the meeting dispersed. Thanks. Everyone sort of like it goes <laughs> out. They, not even, they feel I'm gonna, great. Not even, I'm going <laughs> to give you give you 15 minutes of your day back not even of that like yeah wait wait i need to know i need to know do the mass lords have a repast after the meeting oh the coffee clutch little yeah. moment right you, some folks go imagine the, the awkwardness of trying to like of trying to figure out the, yeah. you know, like um there are some folks are pretty adept at it they've got a really easy, i bet uh, they are yeah. i bet they are which just tells you they've been mass lords too damn long mm-hmm. i i think it's fair to say though are you guys Pretty quick out of here. Do you head back? To the yes, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Get me yeah. out. So you all roll on over to Troll School, and you guys uh, arrive. You're sort of taking it all in about the day that you've been having. Um, what uh, What is it like when you guys come in and you see the space set up? It's pretty full. It's pretty lively. There seems to be a lot of movement happening. Uh, duo is behind uh, the tavern, like bar, sort of serving up drinks. You got Brian handling guests' requests as they're moving back and forth. Um, Leaf running in and out with orders for the kitchen. What's going on with the rivals when you guys come back home? Uh, I feel like. Oh, go ahead. No, oh, no, no I ahead. was. I was just gonna because Celise clocked how Kent was kind of focused on that crest. Mm. 
because we I'm guessing we all sat together, we knew who was who. And she was just like so. she was just like, so so what's good with this this crest? Because you seem a little uh oh, did we take it with us? Well, no, did just like it? did oh. we? Hey, oh, I no. if you you guys could have. I never okay. said that they took it back. It was on the table. If you guys pocketed it on your way out, I'll say that could happen. Yeah, sure. we could go with us. Sure. 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 It's fine. Mm-hmm. And so once we were like, I guess, alone or either in the kitchen or somewhere where guests won't bother us. So uh, what's the deal with this crest? Because I saw how you reacted and I saw, Kent, how you kept staring at the crest and then back at your husband. I look at Virgil because it's not my family to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's like when you have um, to talk about your in-laws with your partner in the room. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to do a visual like, check first. Yeah. You're like, mm-hmm. right. Are we, are we, so what are we, yeah. what's, the, what's the vibe what's, here? What's how, the, yeah. how much can I rag on him? <laughs> can we be really honest? <laughs> right. Yeah. How honest are we being? Um, yeah. Virgil just, he says like, this is, this is my family's crest. It's, oh. it's what, it's, it's what their operatives wear. And why would your family be operating in Waterdeep? Money. And I mean, probably power. Mm, you think they're trying to get you back? I don't think so, because they already sent bounty hunters for us before. Oh. They know how to find us. So who do we have uh, to kill? I don't. We, I'm actually okay. surprised that came from Celise first and not Dahani this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, look, you you are my people. Yeah. And you know, if there if there's not another betrayal incoming, Celise is like, okay, but who we got to kill though? Mm-hmm. I don't know that it's as simple as that. It's more that if. I've not noticed any signs of them making, quote unquote, a move on this city. So this is definitely someone saw an opportunity and someone chased after Mm. it. I hate to say it because it seems like saying that those. He bites back on a just a word that those masked lords were right in that this is something that we should deal with. It just feels like we've been dealing with everything. Mm-hmm. But I th- think that a bit of recon and if we can find out if they're looking for something in particular or just there again, just going for an easy score. Duo walks up to y'all with uh, a plate of mugs for the group so everyone gets served up. And it's like, so what type of score would they be trying to get? What are they trying to lift from y'all? You're nosy. I, I run. Come on, I gotta know what's happening here. It's easy. It is kind of make my way not here to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing is, yeah, Gosling. Yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> hmm. All right. Should I go do some recon because I'm sure they'll know what you and Kent look like. That's just it. I don't know who I don't know who's operating here. I don't I honestly couldn't say that I would know anything about the structure or organization anymore. They and I've heard have, plenty of have no idea. Go ahead. And I've heard plenty of stories, but I've never actually met any of them. Well, that's what I mean, yep. but but Virgil said they sent bounty hunters before. So just to reduce the risk of them coming after. Oh, them. I see, I see. Cuz it was yeah, they they sent that like through the they basically sent it through the hawk winters through arnea Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that was that was yeah like the the figure who there was like the figure behind the figure behind the shadowy figure behind and and then another figure behind that right it felt like Mm. omen was just kind of doing that to get at you guys in particular like doing some background research knew there was a bounty out for you kind of try to call it in 
Um, and uh, Salise, meanwhile, pulls out the page on Virgil and starts amending notes <laughs> from the dossier. Oh, from the dossier? <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah, do we still have that? <laughs> it's because, so pretty. Because IRL, I spent a lot of time on that. Yeah, it's so pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so you are incredibly knowledgeable about a lot of stuff that's, I mean, it makes sense, but like, you are right, incredibly knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm here all the time. I, I listen, I pay attention. I, guys, I'm managing this place incredibly. You know, I'm, I've been kind of growing. I mean, it's right, but it's funny to hear. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm not ready to admit that duo is yeah, growing up, okay? Exactly. <laughs> Yo, you baby, you stay baby. Right. Say, get out of here. <laughs> we, we age, duo stays the same. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's a ghost. He's supposed to not age. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, we just have so little information. So yeah. sure. I mean, if you want to do a, I mean, what were you, what did you have in mind, Salise? Uh, to go down to the city of the dead and do a bit of recon under the guise of the city, having assigned this to the rivals. Because we know that summons is going to arrive at any moment since we were there. Sure. And I'm just getting a head start on our assignment. Mm -hmm. I like to think that. Honey yeah, I like there. to think that all of our assignments and summons have actually beat us back to troll. <laughs> like they've already been well, sent. That's so the annoying. The yeah. That's yeah. so yeah. annoying. Like, <laughs> you admit, there's like a large folio of all the work that needs to be done on Stormhaven Island. Like this gate is in disrepair. We need some maintenance, like some maintenance workers to come well, out. How does it visit. always beat us here? How? <laughs> they, they knew. They knew before that meeting started. Right. They shipped it before it even began. They <laughs> knew that we would that take long. it. Yeah. Meetings are just that long. Mm hmm. Well, I mean, you guys have been in there for a while. Let me get Leaf to make you all some dinner. Stay, eat, re replenish your energy before you all head out. And he, like, kind of makes his way back there, goes to grab some uh, plates and foods, uh, and leaves you all sort of the company of being in the manor. What has the manor been like over the year? Obviously, you guys had a lot of more travel and uh, sort of, like, folks coming through yeah um i would say from my knowledge what i had imagined and part of the reason what sort of drove gazerk out was seeing the amount of people not not in a bad way but like the amount of people particularly from the field ward the amount of people from within oh. the city itself mm -hmm. who came to this fountain thinking that they had done good by the north ward um and over that time it kind of spurred him to like man these civilizations got it wrong i need to figure out what's yeah. happening out of nature i need to reset my druid energy um oh, and sort of like kind of went out that way that, that and i'll i don't know if you guys yeah, i think you all can kind of pick that up from the letter as to like it's sure. also seeing the way in which how often gazirk was looking out the front window just at the fountain and seeing people like hours every day just seeing this before he left yeah. um what are some of the other things that you all have seen or what are some of the changes that have happened to the manor in that time Um, I think one of the things Dahani would have done, um, because there had been some buildings that had been left vacant, um, nearby, I think, like, she would have gone through the proper channels and probably would have gotten Gosrick's help mm -hmm. to have them like be added to the manor so to speak so that there's a bit more space like i think part of what the the traffic from the fountain has brought people who actually like want to stay in the manor at the manor for a bit so having that like kind of like almost like you're kind of staying at a resort where there's like they're not attached to the manor but they're kind of like just nearby so that um like people can stay in those in those houses or rooms if they needed to. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Actually. No, 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 no. I, I think it's, no, no, yeah, like, yeah. like no, le legit. I just it, it's gone now. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> no, I, no I had I had similar thoughts about expansion, right? Yeah. In the in yeah, the ward and in the neighborhood. Before, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. 
And because as, as I recall, looking at the map, like we're in this weird little like cul-de-sac of places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like we can get I think there's like there's a there's a little like potion shop nearby that we can get on board and have specials and whatever and mm -hmm. synergizing the little neighborhood. Yeah, that was sort of what I was thinking, too, in terms of changes to Troll Skull. Um, I also think there are. Okay, I'm curious with the group. I think we might have had a discussion about this. The increased traffic, right? It's a lot of folks hoping for good things from the fountain. But I also imagine that it's not always the most mm. altruistic of folks, right? This is a powerful mm. thing. So what do we... I don't know that, like, City Watch posted around feels right. I don't think that's what we would want. Sure. Uh, but, like, I wonder what we what we do to make sure that the people who come to visit for the right reasons are safe. Mm -hmm. Is it just us watching? Is that part of it? I think maybe. I mean, I, I would also offer that the circumstances under which the fountain was created, mm -hmm. like the wishes and desires of everybody involved in its creation, including Laryl, mm -hmm. like there is, um, like to to put it kind of to put it quite frankly, I think the fountain can kind of sense intention. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. So, like everybody, so anybody who comes to the fountain gets what they need, and you know what they what they think they need is not necessarily what the fountain thinks they need. You know, mm -hmm. so it's probably taken a couple of months for people to realize that no, the fountain gives you exactly what you need, no more, no less. Yeah. And that's really good for some people and some other people are like, but no, I actually wanted more than that, but that that's not what you need. Oh, I like that. And yeah. I think even with some of your influence, maybe um, of the attitude of the North Ward, I think some of the citizens also look out at the fountain, keeping an eye out for any folks who might try to prey on the people, not the fountain itself, but those who might be coming in who are, hey, they're less fortunate than you, but they might have a little fortune, right? Like protecting these people from those types of individuals. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think part of it is also, and I leave it up to you all, it's your influence. It's your engagement in the North Ward. And like, what has that sort of been like since the past year? I actually wonder if our attention to specifically the North Ward has had to wane a little bit as we mm -hmm. are called upon to do so many things across the city. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think I think after everything we went through in the last couple of seasons, years, uh, I don't think we would allow our attention to the North Ward to disappear. I think mm -hmm. we would find ways, right? But it comes at like an energy cost to us now, and it isn't as frequent. We have to rely on the biddies a little bit more yeah. to, to make sure that things continue to run and improve in the way that we had started. But I think we're probably sped, spread much more thin across the city. So the Northward has had less of our immediate attention. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think it seems like also the folks uh, who are a part of the Northward who have been looking out for it kind of under, also understood this. There's like a little knowing that like, hey, you all have done a lot for us, but now you're being called onto the city. A little bit of that energy is coming uh, through. and so. With that knowledge, you sort of is there anything else folks want to add? As well, I was gonna kind of bring us back in the moment, but I don't wanna if all folks have other things they want to say about it, please. I don't think so. I think the only thing that I would add is that like at least where Dahani is concerned, like if anybody if any North Ward resident has asked her for anything and she's been busy doing something else, she's pretty frank about it. Yeah. Like, you know, unless it's something secret or dangerous she's like no i'm actually doing work for blah 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 over and blah 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 but i'll get back to you and like just kind of being honest about what the city is having her and by extension kind of the rest of the rivals do yeah i think that's great and like sort of being a little bit more of a boots on the ground individual and as opposed to how distance this masked work can really be um i think that's great and in this moment, as you all are like sort of thinking about it and taking it in, um, Duo comes back with these plates of food, starts sitting around in front of you. It's like, hey, Leaf sends his best. I hope you guys really enjoy uh, what he had to create today. It seems incredible. Uh, you know, it kind of took a lot out of me, but we got it all here with no spills. So see, doing great. Thank in you. this moment, 
you hear a voice behind you. It's Brian. Um, guys, uh, just a quick question. Something doesn't compute. And you guys turn around. Uh oh. And you look and you see a ghost standing next to Brian, bearing strikingly similar features to Duo. Who is that guy? Who said that? The ghost of Duo? Both of them at the same time. What? Oh boy. Duo? Was this. Wait. Because there were three kobolds. No, oh, I'm duo. We're... I'm duo. Oh no. Oh no. Are we doing the are we doing the duo meme? The pointing meme? <laughs> yeah, it's it's Spider-Man. Oh. And one of them actually is a ghost. One of them is a ghost. Well, uh no, I mean you can give one. me an insight check if you want to check on their ghostliness, a perception, and then... an arcana. <laughs> something to see if they're really a ghost. Give me a roll. Wait a minute. Did the did the moonbeam dispenser go off? Oh shit. <laughs> hey, what a good question that people now ask since gazuk has been gone for a while. <laughs> can I smite the ghost and see what happens? You can definitely try and smite the oh, ghost. Oh my to smite, god. The smite hurt ghosts. I don't know. I don't it's I don't... radiant damage, so well, I would probably. assume so. Yeah. But I, do we uh, wanna kill I have to roll perception on this? Oh you mother. I can banish him. Oh no. Oh, Dahani. That was a 19. Oh, no. You're 19? Oh, no, 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 no. It was a 19. Now it's a 3. So it's a yeah. 8. Okay. Uh, so what do you. Oh, right. I'll roll something what, up. What do you, you roll with that? What, what skill was that? It, sorry, was, wanna, it was perception. Perception. What were our options? I'm sorry. You want to insight with, like, if you want to perceive, if you want to just try to get a lay of what's, whatever you think is going to You mean help all the you. wisdom skills that I'm All bad those okay. intellectual, <laughs> if there's any, if Got there's it. anything you want to, like, analyze, I'll let you do that. All right. We'll, oh, here we go. We'll give an insight from yeah. mine. That's, uh, that's a 14. It's like, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's a 16 because I'm proficient. So it's 16. 16. Great. Um, I'd say across with the nine and the 16. Jesus. You're looking and <laughs> do you know what's I haven't wild? done anything yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please uh, give me a roll. If you want to roll or if you want to do something, let me know what it is. I, I act as if I'm going to smite this ghost. Yeah. And then I just stare at it. Uh, what what are you? Celise, you know me. It's Duo. The no, ghost that's, kobold. That's Duo. And I pointed the clearly not actually a ghost. What do you no, I'm I'm Duo. The the guy standing on the ground, the kobold holding the trays. And the other kobold's like, no, no, imposter. I'm duo. I'm the rich, I'm the ghost kobold. It's only with your you see the panic start to settle in on Duo's face, dealing what the ghost duo, looking at the real one. Um, and with your 16, uh -huh. you you notice something. Uh -huh. That's not a ghost. Uh oh. It's something. It's something ethereal. It's something that can move through walls. It's something uh that's there, a projection of some kind. But it's it's not it like. There's Not no ectoplasm. There's uh. no <laughs> residue of any kind. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, where did you? How? Where did you come from? Have you haven't been here the whole time? No. I, well, which one of us are you talking to? The, sorry, the, the 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 ethereal one. Uh, I, I well, I woke <laughs> up this morning in the woods, and I thought that was weird. And so okay. then I was like, I'm going to come home. And so I just started floating my way back home. And what were you doing yesterday? Yesterday, I was here. I was working with Brian. I was overseeing all the goods and services that we need at the inn. You know, I was taking care of the manor. And this all tracks with what Duo was doing yesterday. Absolutely. The physical check. duo, I should say, physical yeah. duo was doing yesterday. <laughs> sure. This is this other duo is looking at you. It's like, yeah, they're all, I mean, I was doing all of that stuff. And this morning I woke up in my bed and then I walked downstairs. I'm going to ask physical duo. <laughs> I hate this. I love yeah, this. Yeah, I'm going to ask physical <laughs> duo. Uh, what extremely grievous mistake did you make about four years ago? I put 
the rivals into debt because I was mishandling the books? Or was it when I invited the conference here without the rivals knowing? Or was it when I accidentally got everything confused on the goods people had and they shipped them to the wrong rooms? Yeah, I did a lot right. of things wrong four years ago. I don't know. I admit that was a very targeted question. No, it was a very wow. targeted question. Yeah. Dang. I'm going, hold on. I'm going to ask the question, unless you mind, Dahani. No, go for it. Who killed you? Ooh. See a waiver in the physical duo's eye. Uh, uh, um, who killed me? Who? I, I know, I know who killed me. I, I know who killed me. It was, um, it was, who killed me? And you see the other one go, it's like, no, it was one of our buddies. You know, it was one of our friends. They killed us. It was a whole thing. But we, it was great because now we're a ghost now. It's like, I'm gonna apprehend physical duo. Yeah, go ahead. Give me a give me a roll on it. Let's see. We're gonna go acrobatics on this. Cool. <laughs> Vindication. What? Yeah. Oh my god. That is Bro. a natural twenty for a thirty-one. Beautiful. And in this moment, you see physical duo's eyes waver as you go to grab him. Him not being able to answer the one question that was so pivotal to duo's identity and as you go you see him try to move and slip and for whatever reason he moves just a little too slick for someone who's a physical person thinking that they're a ghost shifting almost in ways that a normal person shouldn't be able to do but you are faster and you are able to grab them and hold them as they sort of snap back into place as physical duo, I was like, no, no, you guys got the wrong guy. You guys got the wrong guy. I, I, I'm, I'm duo. I'm duo. No. No. Well, maybe. <laughs> I tried, and he switches back into his doppelganger form. Okay. And that's where we're going to end this week's no. episode. <laughs> Oh, How is this you. duo been going in and out of the moon? Moon. Well, Gosring hasn't, well, been, here hasn't, been, hasn't here. been here to. Gosring hasn't been here, but also this duo was here when we made it. I feel and like probably, this duo. Oh, oh goodness! Oh. This, is just, this is just like that brilliant DM Masood Hawk to give us something <laughs> like this at the end uh, of an episode. You're welcome we back. We're, we're back, back, we're back, back. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We're going to go around the table. We're going to talk about who we are, where you can find us on the internet, and what we're up oh. to besides rivals. Uh, I'm going to throw it to, uh, in lieu of Sharif, myself. <laughs> hey, you can find Sharif on the internet at Sharif Jackson. Uh, he does a lot of really cool stuff. He does tutoring. He's an excellent father. He's supposed about playing video games. Uh, yeah, go check out his socials and support him for being the awesome dude that he is. Uh, up next, Eugenio. Hi, everybody. I'm Eugenio. Uh, you can find me on the internet at DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, I'm so happy to be back. This is so great. Uh, you can find me on Tuesdays and Thursdays on my channel here on Twitch. Uh, this week, we are playing Scorn, which is much more of a puzzle game than a horror game I have found. Not to say that it isn't creepy. Uh, so come hang out for some very creepy atmospheric uh, puzzles on Tuesday and Thursday. And then Wednesdays for the next six weeks. This is a, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. This is a period of like long running AP campaigns coming to a close. Um, so we mentioned, you know, uh, this will be, this will be rivals. Season 15 is sort of rivals, uh, swan song uh but it's also my podcast that's been going for about about the same amount of time actually as rivals uh the last refuge is uh finishing up our final season uh so on wednesday nights we're premiering uh the episodes of our final season season 10 on my channel uh so you can come and hang out we've had a great group of people a lot of whom i'm pretty sure have never listened to an episode of the last refuge uh and seem to be enjoying our finale season despite not having a ton of context uh so you can come hang out with us uh i'm live on my channel with those and the rest of the podcast cast on uh, on Wednesday nights at seven Eastern, four Pacific, uh, we got six more this season, and then that show's coming down too. It's wild. Uh, thanks for being here, y'all. And up next, Brian. Hi, uh, I'm Brian. I am um, Urban Bohemian, pretty much everywhere on the internet except for TikTok, but whatever. And you can catch me on my Twitch channel on Tuesdays and Saturdays and Sundays, and yeah, it's a little bit quiet right now. I um i've got a i've got to like write down the list of the things i'm actually doing um and 
I didn't get to. Uh oh, I heard a. I heard a system error. On that my was phone. me because I've been okay, sharing I, sound for I was no like, reason. I hope episode. I'm still here because I was like, yeah, what just yeah, yeah, you're still good. Um, <laughs> and while it happened before, I want to say that I have my first time sitting in the DM chair alone. Um, recently, we did a Golden Girls inspired one shot uh, benefiting the Trevor Foundation. We raised two thousand dollars. It was a lot of fun. It was terrifying, and I've already told uh, Hanyo that he's not allowed to let me do it on my own again. So hire us. <laughs> That's right. Listen, mm -hmm. <laughs> but also oh, you were great and you could totally do it on your own again if you wanted, but I'm no, very happy to do it with you. <laughs> 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 mm. and I want to throw out for folks. If you got any questions for any of the NPCs or characters, put them in chat right now while we're doing our outros. Uh, really appreciate that. And we're going to move right along to Tanya. Hey, make sure I'm not muted. Um, I'm doing a bunch of stuff on my channel tomorrow. I'm doing the Queer XP podcast. Don't know if it's live or pre-recording, but uh, talking about being a DM, being queer, and RPGs. Uh, Wednesday, I'm actually doing a thing with Women in Games International about um, building communities and things like that. It's going to be on LinkedIn, so I don't know how this is going to work, um, but I do have a tweet for you. I have no idea. I've never done a thing on LinkedIn in my life, so we'll <laughs> see. Um, and then, of course, coming back to Rivals and streaming on my channel, trying to get through Forspoken. And um, and then I will be at Dice in uh, Vegas in a few weeks. So. so we'll see how that goes. I've never been to Dice or Vegas. Tell us how it is. And also not, because what's supposed to happen there stays there. So live live what you need to live. Um, and then moving right along. We got Latia. It's me. Um, mm -hmm. hi. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Latia Jaquise because that's my name. Mm -hmm. Uh Rivals is all I have going on, and it will all be all that I have going on for a while. So uh come see me on Sundays. Yay. Heck yeah. And then there's me. Hello, I'm a suit. I'm your GM. Uh you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Marud Boy, M-A-H-R-U-D-E-B-O-I. Um, yeah, I'm doing Rivals right now. That's the main stream that I'm sort of a part of. There's not really much on the internet that I'm keeping up with. I'm doing a lot of stuff with Second City. So if you are, oh, if you're going to be in Mathau, Washington or Seattle, Washington on uh, next weekend, I'm going to be doing a tour out there. If you want to come meet me, you can go check. Uh, Mathau is going to be on uh, the 10th of February. And then I will be in Seattle doing a Valentine's Day show at Second City on the 14th. Um, come hang out. I'll say hello. I know Lauren and I are already going to get dinner and meet up with some other folks, so it's going to be a good time. But if you happen to be in the area and you want to say hello, so shoot me a DM and we'll try and make it happen. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I got for stuff that are going around. Check out more of what I got going on at Twitter and Instagram, M-A-H-R-U-D-U-B-O-I. And I'll throw it to questions. Um, we had one for Salise to start us out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Has your determination to catch Faye waned? at all oh, over this year absolutely not especially after finding that notebook it is ramped up and uh because because Celise is entering like this kind of john wick-esque paranoia as well of who's out to get her mm -hmm. so now she's thinking and now this mystery about virgil's family she's in her brain putting two and two together and getting eight <laughs> so mm -hmm. i'm wondering but i am definitely still trying to find a uh, fey and have a word a sharp word heck yeah Ooh, a sharp word a sharp word nice. next one question for real duo do, do you, you call your sword yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you feel reassured <laughs> over how quickly your friends figured out who uh, that you were real well i feel like they should have known because i was the only ghost in the room i was the only ghost kobold i feel like that should have given it away Instantly. I am. That should have been. My brain the, is leaking is out fair, of my ear. When that's this a fair answer, it's like they don't even Shut. know me at all. It's like they don't even know who I am. He's committed to the bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then a uh, question for Eddie slash all of the rivals: How do you feel about basically becoming city administrators? Hate it. <laughs> um, it's the pits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think worse. Go no, go ahead. I was going to no, say no, worse, no. worse because like they not so subtly expect us and our non mass lord guys to fix everything. Like, like, do we even need to have the meetings at all? You could just show up at our house and ask us to do stuff. 
that part. Like if they, yeah. they if they would stop beating around the bush in mass lord meetings and be like, well, somebody's got to do this. Mm-hmm. I'd be more inclined to do this. Mm-hmm. And now I'm sick of doing this. <laughs> and then yeah, but every time I think, every time Ken thinks he just wants to outright refuse the next one. It's like, but we can't because we said we would do that. Like, it's very, it's, it is conflicting, though. It's getting to the point where, uh, you know, slowly our, we're not Watsy anymore. Slowly our fucks are uh, reducing <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> about whether or not it's, you know, we are responsible for this or, or should have to have to take this on. Yeah. Slowly. Well, at varying rates, yeah. Kent is more slowly than some, perhaps. It helps to take a nap during the meetings. It helps. You know, yes, it, it, it makes a big difference. It also depends on what they ask us to do, because like this stuff yeah. is like a slog. But like sometimes they give us assignments that I find interesting. So. Yeah, sure. Occasionally. Then you get to know a little bit more about uh, Waterdeep sometimes. Not always, yeah. but sometimes. Mm. Mm. Uh, last question for Physical Duo. How are you feeling now, bud? Not great. Um, I had this whole thing going, thought I was going to be going under the radar for a while. Uh, and then I honestly have no idea how this has happened. Um, but maybe we'll find out next week. You're going to have to tune in to see. Breaking the sport surprisingly, wall. Yeah, wow, wow duo. So aware, fake duo there. We're like, what? Uh, <laughs> Deeply upsetting. Right. Yeah. I think that's us. And I think we're at time kind of perfectly. Um, so we'll be back next week. Oh, I want to thank, and we all want to thank everyone who made this season possible to do Indiegogo. Like, y'all, we could not be here without you. And we mm. just thank you all so much um, for supporting us and letting us tell the finale that we want to tell. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe they regret putting me in the DMs joke. <laughs> to start. But I'm telling yeah. a great finale. I'm having yeah. a good time. <laughs> Real talk, uh, though. Oh, shush. Real talk, <laughs> though. We got through a heck of a lot this episode. We did. Yeah, yeah. we did. That was great. It's a good movement. I'm really I like uh, I'm excited for how things go. We've got five more episodes for the season, uh, this part of the season where I'm in the helm. So we'll see how that carries out. Um, yeah, thank you all for everyone who's been able to support us, um, especially the Indiegogo folks, also the people on Patreon. Sorry, something got in my throat. Um, emotion but, over Patreon. Indeed, yes, I know. Emotion. just choked up a little <laughs> like, bit. It's a little, little too much. Yeah, yeah, you okay over there? I think so. <laughs> I, I think that bit of veggie sausage went down where it should have, um, but we're okay now. <laughs> Uh, but thank you all so much. We're going to be back next uh, Sunday. It's going to be a great time. We'll get into season 15, episode two uh, with the rivals. Uh, and for folks who are in the audience, don't go anywhere. We're about to raid uh, the painting pirate. We're about to see what they're up to. So stay in the chat, Yay. go check them out um, and send them a lot of great love from the rivals. Uh, second ever cooking stream and baking. Ooh. 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 <laughs> wow all right uh okay then yeah see you guys soon Woo, see you next uh, week bye, bye. bye.